Okay, we're going to begin today making some textures using some different techniques out of watercolors. And the first thing you need to do, you're going to get a sheet like this that has not been painted, obviously. And you're going to tape it down on all four sides. Not just a little bit of pe a little piece, you want a piece all the way across. Watercolor, it, uh, watercolor paper, as you can feel it has a tooth. The tooth means that it's a little bit rougher and it's going to hold on to that paint. But it also is going to buckle a little bit. So that's why you want to make sure that you have it secured down to your board. All right, so you're going to get your sheet, looks like this. And you're going to write your first and last name and your hour here. And I'm going to show you some different ways to use your watercolors. You're going to get a set like this. And I need for you to make sure that you don't get these dirty. First thing you should do is get your clean water. And as you're working, as your water gets dirty, I need for you to dump that at your table sink and get fresh water. And then take this and put a little bit of water in each one. That way it's going to soften up for you. And I think it makes it a whole lot easier. Now, after we've done this a couple of days, you're probably not going to have to add too much water. Now, the black, just forget the black exists for the moment. Black gets a little bit muddy, and we can add black at the end. You're also going to have watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils, I need you to make sure that when you look at the pencils, that they either say the word watercolor or there's a paintbrush. If it doesn't say watercolor or there's not a paintbrush, it's not a it's not watercolor and it's not going to work for you. Each table has watercolor pencils and note that there's a piece of tape at the end here that's orange that goes to the orange table. When you get these, they will be upside down like this with the lead pointed down and the colors on the tape at the top. When you get your box, you need to make sure that there's none missing. You cannot come to me at the end of class and go, oh yeah, there are three missing when you gave them to us. Nope. No, 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 you can't do that. You have to tell me at the beginning of class, is it possible some are missing at the beginning of class? Sure, things happen. But you've got to tell me at the beginning, not the end. So after you've got it taped down, you've got your water, you've got your watercolor cakes, that's what those are called, and watercolor pencils at your table. Then you're gonna start adding some texture to your pieces. So. We looked at analogous colors, and you have a cheat sheet. You have a cheat sheet for analogous colors. You have to use sets of analogous colors. Those are always going to be all warm colors or all cool colors. So, red, red, violet, violet. This is a set. Red, violet, violet, blue, violet. Violet, blue, violet, blue. Blue, blue, green, green. Yellow, green, green, and blue, green. Yellow, yellow, green, green. Yellow, yellow, orange, orange. Yellow, orange, orange, red, orange. Red, red, orange, orange. For your warm colors, for your like earth tones, ro uh, rocks, wood, brown, yellow, red, and orange. Now we won't use black until the very, very, very end. If you want your Mona Lisa or you want something to have black hair, then you've got to use that at the very, very end. And when you do that, you're going to use black, blue, and violet. So that's your cheat sheet. Refer back to that. You're going to need to label everything and tell me what you are going to paint each individual area before you start painting. So on this one, I have created a sphere and I used the blue, the blue violet. And I have a hard time seeing the difference. I suggest that you make sure that they say violet and blue. They look really, really close. That looks pretty much exactly the same to me. One is violet, one is blue. And then I also used the red. I could have used the pink because pink is just a high key value of red. And I went around with my darkest value around the outside with the blue. And then I tapered it like we did in our chiaroscuro so that it gets lighter and lighter. And I use a couple of different techniques for blending. One is called cross hatching, where you make lines like this and then back over. The other one is a scribble technique, where you go like this, and you can blend the colors like that. Now, I'm gonna add the water to this, and the thing that people do wrong the most on watercolor pencils is they rub that, that brush back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until 
there was no point in ever putting analogous colors on there to begin with. So the water is going to mix those colors together. I'm going to start around the outside. And notice I left a little white area. I'll push some of that color in there as I go. And then I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let the water do its work now. Notice that I stayed inside that sphere. If I got the paint is only going to go where the water is. So we're going to leave that one be for a minute and move on to the next one. This one is a wash. Oh, I forgot to tell you. On each one of these, you're going to try out the different color combinations of analogous colors. As you do, you're going to label them here. What colors you are trying out on each one of those. You need to get each of the primary and secondary color groups used. All right, so the next one, this is a wash. The way you get an entire area a nice smooth color is you put a whole layer, put a layer of El Watro on the page. Then you're gonna use your brush for this, not the colored pencils. And mm, I want a nice green. You can mix the colors up here. If you don't have the color mix that you want, if there's stuff on here, get it wet, wipe it off with a paper towel. That's no problem. Then I'm going to just go back over the wet area and fill that in. That's how you get one area filled with one value. That's it. That is called a wash. Now a gradated wash would be I'd add darker value on one side, darker green, and then lightly get lighter. Again, really important that you've got clean water. Now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some blue to that green. So we've got a blue green. So I'm gonna get my blue, make sure it's the right intensity that I want. Start on the other side and start to blend that together. Now that's a pretty intense blue. I'm gonna get that wash that out. So now I just have water in my brush and I can kind of blend those colors together. And then I'm going to leave it. So again, you're going to write down what analogous colors you used on that part. Watercolors, really important that you also remember that watercolors are never meant to be one coat. Always add layers to watercolors. So if it doesn't turn out the way you liked it, then you add another layer later. Now on my greenery here, uh, my leaves, my leaves, I'm gonna go ahead, I put dark green around the outside. I also put blue, I use blue, green, and yellow. So where I want it to look like the light is hitting it the most, I put yellow. Then I'm gonna go, by, go through each one and just put a little bit of water on. I'm not gonna do my stems. If I do my stems like that, then it's kind of, no, it's pointless. That's pointless. That's silly. Don't do that. Now, after it kind of sets up a little bit and you can see what's going on, you can go back into it while it's wet. So while it's wet, you can come back in and draw right into that and it'll make it a darker value. And you can also do this. You can dip it in the water. Don't let it soak in the water because it'll split. And then you can come back and It'll make it even darker if you want. Darker, darker, darker. So what watercolor pencils are really good for is getting textures. So really focus on textures when you're using the watercolor pencils. All right, my next one, grass, 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 grass. Okay, so on this one, I used green, blue, and yellow again. And this time, I'm gonna do a wash all the way across. Start at the bottom. Try to keep some consistency and go all the way across. Then I'm going to leave it alone. Let the water do the work. See what the water wants to do with blending those together and come back to it. Okay, I've got fire. So fire, red, yellow, and orange. Remember the water is only going to go where your brush, I'm sorry, paint's only going to go where the water is. Yeah. Going to go over those lines. Notice they're really skinny. Probably would be a good idea to have a smaller brush here. Perhaps. And 
as tempting as it might be to get in there and like push that paint around with your brush, first layer, leave it just the way it is. This one is wood, it's a wood grain. So you're gonna go over the darkest area, you're gonna go over the part where, which would be receded, and that would be the lines of the grain with the dark brown. Then I went parallel to those lines with yellow and orange. Now I'm just gonna put my brush, mm, this is important. See, I knew I'd do this. Didn't even have to put that in my lesson plan to remember. If you have a paper towel right next to you and you've got a drip, it'll pick up instantly. Like, it'll pick up really quickly. If you wait a minute, no. If you wait till it's dry, then you're stuck with that. Now, what I forgot to tell you is that in between these two, it's wet here. I don't want to paint that one yet because that green and yellow and blue, it's going to bleed into that. So I'm going to move to another part of my picture here. All right. At the bottom, I have some bricks, because she's a brick house. Some bricks, I outlined them with some red, then I lightly shaded in with the side of my colored pencil, an overall brown shade. I'm gonna come back in and add a few more cross hatches. I'm not doing it all the way across, it's gonna be an uneven surface. Bricks are uneven. And on this piece, I did brown and yellow. So I'd have some contrast with that. So I'm gonna put my water just on the area that I want to get wet. And, ooh, might be pushing it. I think it would be pushing it to try to do those rocks right now. So we're gonna hold off on those rocks. All right, down here, our wolf. I put brown and yellow and a little bit of a flesh tone, kind of an, a light orange. And I'm gonna blend those pieces together. Now, like I said earlier, black is really, really difficult to control in watercolors, especially in your watercolor pencils. What usually happens is uh, people who, students who aren't really accustomed to using them will forget that the black colored pencil, watercolor pencil is there and they'll end up getting it wet and that'll muddy up the whole piece. So at the very end, we can do some black colored pen, watercolor pencil, but at the very beginning, we want to leave that out. Now, this has more yellow than I'd like for it to have. I mean, honestly, this wolf looks like it's a blonde not found a blonde one. I mean, it could be a cross between a golden retriever, but still not buying it. So I'm gonna go back into it with my brown and I'm gonna turn my paper because I don't wanna lay my hand in that. And I'm gonna put some more brown in there. So I'm working with a dry colored pencil on the wet paper and I just added some water to my brush. I just, I'm sorry, to my pencil so I can get it a little bit darker. And when you're making animal hair, when you're making fur, think about the direction that you pet the animal. So it's not just random, you're gonna, that hair lies in a specific way. I mean, it doesn't lie, like telling a lie, it lies, it lays down. Yep, totally in here by myself again, talking to myself. It's okay, this little finger, you're talking to yourself. I know, I know, I know. I'm a lumberjack and that's okay. I work all night and I sleep all day. I'm not really a lumberjack. That didn't really happen. Sorry, it didn't really happen. All right, see if I can blend that some more. And then it's tempting to keep working, keep working, keep working. Leave it alone, go to another spot, let that dry, and then come back to it. So let's see if that helps out. I'm gonna go into those eyes a little closer. Now on the eyes and places like the eyes that are small, I'm gonna wait until the very end, and then I'm just gonna use the watercolor pencil without any water. I'm just gonna leave it. Just a lack of that. All right, yeah, my wolf is still hungry like a wolf. Yeah, but it's still a blonde, that ain't right. I'm gonna come back to it. Okay, so now let's come back here and see what we've got up here, up here. So I can see this is still a bit wet there, and I do wanna work back into that. I sometimes can push it around my finger. I'm gonna wait for that to get completely dry and then I'm gonna come back to it. 
Now here, I like for this to have more of a green background, but I don't want to get rid of all the texture. So once you've taken the time to put all that texture in there, be careful not to get rid of it. You want to really make sure that you have a good texture. So to get, I'm going to get a light green, and the way to lighten up a value is just to add more water. And let's see, test it. Yep, that's good. And I'm just going to give it a wash. Ooh, wash, 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 wash over the whole thing. It was still a little bit damp, so that blue, I'm sorry, that green went on there really easily. All right, I'm gonna set this one aside for now, and we're gonna look at the cloth. So, the clothes on Mona Lisa. When you're doing cloth, the parts that are gonna be down in the folds where the light's not hitting, those will be the darker areas. The parts on the top, where it's white here, those areas, lighter value. So I've put on a dark violet all, I went right on top of these lines with the dark violet. I went right next to, parallel to these lines with a fuchsia, a pink. And then for this one, I used my white colored pencil, watercolor pencil, in between each one of these so that when I put this on, it's definitely gonna be lighter than it would without the white on there first. And usually the way to use that white, you can't cover stuff up with watercolor, but if you know you want something to be light, then you can use that. So let's see what happens here when I put my water on. Now, as you're putting these brush strokes on, go with the direction, the direction of the fabric. So don't just go, whoop, don't do that. You'll waste all that effort you put into it earlier with all those lines and you have put in some effort at this point. Now I keep rinsing out my brush because I don't want it to get really dark. I, want it, I don't want it to get dominated. You can always add color to watercolor. You cannot take color away. That does not work. All right, I'm liking what's going on there. I'm gonna brush it one more time, kind of push some of that color around I don't feel that it's too dark. And you want to take, make sure you're pulling your brush. Don't push your brush. So I'm going to go against the fabric right here because I want to get right up against that hand. And then I'm going to bring my brush back up to make sure those brush strokes go that away. All right, then I'm going to leave that alone and come back to that later. Now you can also start with a wash and then add your color pencil on top of it. So I wet this down first. I put my yellow from my cakes, put that on here. And now I'm gonna decide, I could either go with a yellow green or I could go with a yellow orange. And I think I'm gonna go with a yellow, yellow orange. So I'm gonna use red, orange on top of my yellow. I'm gonna go really dark with my red. Yellow is always the lightest value in the color wheel. So I always put that on the highest key values. And I'm just gonna do a sample of this for you right now. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because you get bored watching this. And then you can make the parallel lines. You could also do a little bit of light, make these light, shading this in a little bit with the colored pencil, the watercolor pencil. And fabric, when the way fabric lies, it's like hair in that it gets it's skinny and then it gets whiter and skinny again. So if you are trying to add some more shapes of color in there, think about that. All right, and then I'm gonna add my water. Water. Make sure your brush is clean. Make sure you've got a paper towel right next to you so that if you make a mistake, this is not the end of the world. Yep, I think I like that. I think I love it. What am I so afraid of? I don't know. What am I so afraid of? That I'm not gonna get the contract. All right, now, I'd like a little bit more of that yellow to come back. Let's see, can I put some of this yellow on here? Yes, I can. So I want you to experiment. I want you to try things. You've got some space around the outside. Experiment and then if it doesn't work, have a paper towel. You can always clean it up with that. Yep, I like that. I think I like it. All right, this is the same thing. 
This could go to, oh, same thing in that I put a wash over it. Remember, a wash is when you get the area that you want paint on, you get that wet first, and then you brush it with the water. Then you put the color from your cake. You're gonna mix the colors up here, and then lay that on. So this one could go either uh, blue-green, or it could go towards the blue-violet. All right, hair. Give me head with hair. So if you, you can do some crazy colors. You do not have to do uh, typical brown, blonde. Blonde's actually kind of weird to get. So to do that, if you want a blonde, you're gonna use more of the yellow. I would probably start with a wash of the yellow using my cakes. And then you wanna put in a darker value in between. And remember, you can get light, you can get darker, you can't get lighter. Again, you wanna go with the grain or the direction of those lines. So don't just make a bunch of scribbly lines. You wanna do the direction of those lines. Then you're gonna wash it, good to go. You can make, your Mona could have green hair, green, yellow, and blue. She could have some fuchsia hair, fuchsia, pink, uh, red, maybe um, a violet in there. Use this as your cheat sheet, and I want you to label on an extra piece exactly where you're going to make all of your colors, what colors you're gonna use. So, on your separate piece, you're gonna label them. So this, let's say I'm gonna use blue, violet, and teeny bit of fuchsia. So I would write blue, violet, and pink, because you probably can't spell fuchsia. On, um, on Google Classroom, you'll find that there are videos on skin tone. I've got a light, video, uh, light skin tone, a dark skin tone, and I also have a zombie on YouTube. And after you get the first layers on and it's dried, then I want you to come back and add more layers. You're gonna add more depth. And after you get the whole thing covered amazingly, then I have a little surprise. I have some glittery, shiny watercolors. Ah! But they don't, they're, op they're not opaque. Opaque means that you can't see through it. They're translucent. So you have to have a base coat first before you can use that. Ta -da! This is dry now, I can go across that. All right, so at this point, I would decide, do I want any of this darker? What do I wanna to add to these? These red bricks, they're pretty red. I think it will come back into that, but at the moment, I'm gonna just add water there and wait for that spot to dry. Remember, my expectation is 100% on task, 100% of the time. So if you are at a point where you're like, gotta wait for stuff to dry before I move on. Then get out your separate pieces, get out some practice pieces, and practice some different values. Mm, that one has the water, or the lines going the wrong direction. I don't like that. All right, layer, layer, layer. Make sure that you have all your colored pencils are labeled, none of them missing. When you're done with your watercolors, take some paper towel, tissue, wipe this out. Then rinse your brush, squeeze it so it's a nice tip, lay it inside, make your container cleaner than what I have, and then voila, you're done.